Prince Philip's funeral will take place at St. George's Chapel in the grounds of Windsor Castle at 3 p.m. on Saturday, in a service attended by only a reduced group of 30 friends and royal family members due to virus restrictions. The Queen will bid a private farewell to Prince Philip before his coffin leaves Windsor Castle for his funeral. The grieving monarch will say an intimate final goodbye to her husband of 73 years before his journey to St. George's Chapel. She has been the epitome of dignity since the Duke's passing age 99 last Friday, reports the Daily Mail. It sets out the details of the 50-minute service, which will include hymns and readings chosen by the Duke. There will also be a full nod to the Prince's naval heritage. The funeral starts at 2 p.m. with prayer by the Dean of Windsor, David Connor. Twenty minutes later, family members who are not in the procession party will be driven to St. George's Chapel. At 2.27 p.m., as the band of the Grenadier Guards plays in the castle quadrangle, the Duke's specially adapted Land Rover Defender will appear. Meanwhile, the Duke's love of carriage driving will be a poignant feature on the day, with his carriage which he designed himself, and ponies making an appearance. The polished dark green four-wheeled carriage, accompanied by two of Philip's grooms, will stand in the quadrangle of the castle as the duke's coffin is carried past in a procession on a Land Rover hearse. Philip's coffin will be laid on the back of the vehicle at 2.41pm by the bearer party. From there they will view the procession and await the arrival of Her Majesty the Queen who will then be led to her seat along with others attending the event. Everyone will be asked to stand when the coffin is removed from a Land Rover and carried to the west steps of the chapel, where it will rest at 3 p.m. for a one-minute national silence before being carried inside. At 2.44 p.m. the Queen and her lady-in-waiting will leave the Sovereign's entrance at Windsor Castle, in their Bentley as the national anthem is played. A minute later, a nine-strong family procession, led by Prince Charles and Princess Anne, will follow the coffin, joined by a personal protection officer, private secretary, two pages and two valets. A touching song performed at Princess Diana's funeral, and the weddings of her children will be among those to ring out from St. George's Chapel tomorrow. Prince Philip's unwavering loyalty to the Queen and his courage, Fortitude and faith will be put at the heart of his funeral service later today. The order of service published ahead of Prince Philip's funeral on Saturday afternoon shows a string of musical pieces with deep personal connections to the royal. No sermon will be delivered during the ceremonial royal service, in keeping with Philip's wishes, and there will not be a eulogy. His love of the sea and long association with the Royal Navy permeates the order of service which has been released by Buckingham Palace ahead of Saturday's proceedings. Music chosen by Philip, who served in the Navy, includes the hymn Eternal Father, Strong to Save, traditionally associated with seafarers and the maritime armed services. Written in 1860 by William Whiting, it was inspired by the dangers of the sea described in Psalm 107. Philip was closely associated with the Navy for more than 80 years having enrolled at Britannia Royal Naval College in Dartmouth age 17. He served at sea during the Second World War, earning a mention in dispatches for his bravery, and later held numerous honorary ranks. A jubilati which was written for St. George's Chapel, Windsor Castle, at Philip's request, and a psalm which he requested should be set to music, and which was first sung in honor of his 75th birthday will also form part of the service. It will be sung by a choir of just four at St. George's Chapel due to COVID regulations. The hymn is strongly associated with the Navy in the UK, but is also popular with the naval traditions of countries like the US and France. No sermon will be delivered during the ceremonial royal service, in keeping with Prince Philip's wishes. No members of the royal family will read lessons or give readings and there is no eulogy. This is in keeping with the Queen Mother's funeral in 2002 when the delivery of readings was left to the clergy, and there was no eulogy then either. No sermon will be delivered during the ceremonial royal service, in keeping with Philip's wishes to get things done in a speedy, efficient manner. After the Duke's coffin is lowered into the royal vault a lament will be played by a pipe major from the Royal Regiment of Scotland. 
The Duke was Royal Colonel of the Highlanders, 4th Battalion, the Royal Regiment of Scotland. The last post will be sounded by buglers of the Royal Marines and, after a period of silence, the reveille will be played by the state trumpeters of the Household Cavalry. Philip served as Captain General of the Royal Marines for more than six decades and at the end of the service the buglers will sound action stations. It is played on a warship to signal all hands should go to battle stations and is sometimes featured at funerals of naval men. As the service draws to a close the Archbishop of Canterbury will pronounce the blessing and the national anthem will be sung by just the choir. Among them will be a touching navy send-off before his coffin is lowered into the royal vault. A Buckingham Palace spokesman said yesterday, while clearly the plans have been modified to take into account public health guidelines, the ceremonial aspects of the day and the funeral service itself are still very much in line with the Duke's wishes. His coffin is currently at the private chapel at Windsor Castle. On Saturday it will be covered by his personal standard along with his naval cap, sword and a wreath of flowers. It will be moved to the inner hall at 11am by a bearer party from the Queen's Company, 1st Battalion Grenadier Guards. Towards the end of the service, the last post will be sounded by buglers of the Royal Marines from the west end of the nave. The Dean will then give a commendation as the coffin is lowered into the Royal Vault, with a final goodbye from the Queen. Tonight, the Queen shared a candid photograph of herself and Philip on the Scottish Highlands, taken by Prince Edward's wife Sophie, the Countess of Wessex in 2003. Another tweet from the official Royal Family Twitter account. Along with a selection of photos from throughout Philip's life, read, the Duke of Edinburgh was a loving husband and a devoted father, grandfather and great-grandfather. Philip's send-off in St. George's Chapel has been scaled back by covered but there will be no shortage of pomp and ceremony, Buckingham Palace revealed. The Dean of Windsor, in the bidding, will also pay tribute to Philip's kindness, humor and humanity. With grateful hearts. We remember the many ways in which his long life has been a blessing to us, he will say of Prince Philip, who passed away age 99 last Friday. During the service, he will say, we have been inspired by his unwavering loyalty to our Queen, by his service to the nation and the Commonwealth, by his courage, fortitude and faith. Our lives have been enriched through the challenges that he has set us, the encouragement that he has given us, his kindness. Humor and humanity. Thank you for watching our video. Please support growing channel by subscribe channel and like video hour. And don't forget activate notifications to channel to always get the latest news. If you have any problems with the information in the video, please write a comment below to let us know and answer.